almost like serious questions because I do have children that are like um, coming into the teenage ages. So what like your recommendations of appropriate conversation, because we do make like our, I wouldn't say sex talk, but kind of sex talk normal. Like I don't make it weird. I don't think at least maybe they feel like it's weird, but maybe if you could weigh in for like other parents of what. So Mary, let's do that for the second segment. Let's, let's bring it to kind of the, the educational I mean, it's all educational, but let's let's like kind of bring it in a little bit so that the third segment is more lighthearted. Okay. So let's second segment, I think, because I, Mary, I think that's a great point. And I think we, uh, every time I've, I've done shows with Erica, I think we miss out on, on that opportunity. And I yeah. think that's a really good mm-hmm. opportunity to talk about. So let's, let's okay. do that. Okay. What's that? He needs 14. Oh, He's going to okay. go shotgun a white claw surge. <laughs> Do you guys remember the actual surge? Were you around? Yes, for that? of like, course. Like I remember paying 25 cents for a surge. I don't know if you remember that part of life. <laughs> and it was like the nectar of the gods to me. And now the idea of something like that makes me want to die. Yeah. Surge was really good. Well, I felt it like it was. Surge was out. Yeah. Oof. Surge was really good. All right. Chris, you were alive when Surge was around? Yeah. I think I was, no, I think I was dead when Surge was out. I think I, I think I was still dead. <laughs> All right. We're coming back in three, two, one. Welcome back to the No New Friends podcast. As always, please support our Patreon, www.patreon.com slash no new friends podcast. You can be like Jared and uh, be in the live studio audience for all of our recordings or for just $3 a month, you get extra bonus private videos from Mary's collection. Why, and Mary- I don't know why you attribute them to <laughs> Erica's going to tell my- us more about private no, videos listen, later, Listen, if sure. you really were to gonna have rate them. my private videos, and I'll upload them, but nobody's going to watch them. It's, I- it's waffles doing cute <laughs> things. That's literally what my oh, your private dog, videos your dog. are. Oh, my God. Waffles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my very- adorable baby. I didn't know what waffles was. I'm like, oh, <laughs> sorry. No, so waffles is my Pembroke Welsh Corgi, and she's perfect. Her full name is Waffles Bacon Aloysius or Alamode Aloysius Reedy, oh and she's gosh. beautiful. Um, Until she eats your wedges, and then she's a hoe. Look, I got. I did call her hoe. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch. She did eat my wedges. She and I was so mad. I was so mad. But then she started her doggy period, and I couldn't be mad at her anymore. <laughs> Cause I understand it'd be like that. Like I would eat wedges if I was that mad. So it's okay. You're, you're ridiculous. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> you have, feel, you have between now and <laughs> August 1st to vote for us. We're a finalist in Orlando weekly's best of Orlando competition under the category, best local color, best local podcast. We're up against some very stiff competition. We need all the help we can. If get. no pun intended. No this pun episode. intended. <laughs> uh, we are for still. Me blessed with her presence uh sexpert erica rivera is in the house with us and she can be reached on all social media platforms the erica rivera very simple the erica rivera uh for all of your sex needs well all of your sex whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. all of your sex questions <laughs> that's a different that's erica rivera <laughs> <laughs> my bad my bad we we're having some great conversation uh during the break that we're gonna bring right into this episode so i'm gonna kind of turn it over to mary and kind of yes. let mary uh run this next part of this interview i mean well not run okay let's not get too serious here scott so what we did uh start to talk about is you know, kind of the more, not, I wouldn't say serious side, but just the realistic side of sex and that not being stigmatized and kind of offering more education. And I don't want to say exposure, but exposure to Scott, your face. I can't, (laughs) I don't mean that as a pun though. I think that like for me raising children and, you know, I have a preteen daughter that is, you know, coming of age, she's becoming a lady. And for me, I have never with my children made like when there's like a sex scene in movies, I try not to make it weird because it is a normal part of life. Like I don't want them to ever feel, I guess, weird or awkward because life is scary and scary things happen kind of like what you were talking about before. So I don't ever want my children to feel like there's any topic that is taboo, but also there's kind of a line, I think too, of what's appropriate to talk to your children about and to expose them to. And then what's like going too far maybe, but um, I don't know, maybe if you can like kind of weigh in on that, like, so 
I, I know that things in movies are like super dramatized and like they make like, you know, the first time you have sex look so romantic and so wonderful. There's music, when, there's fireworks. Yeah, when Never in actuality any you're in yeah. the back of a Chevy Blazer and it's terrible. Like who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> like, But my point is, is that uh, what would you say is like the path to happy to educate a, a, a teenager, but also... Um, I don't know, make it not awkward, you know, for the parents out there who want to have that, not even conversation, but maybe just like, Ooh, what do I do? Great question. Great question. That, and that, take it over. <laughs> yeah. That age is going to be awkward no matter what. So that yeah. might be hard to avoid. However, I think that making sure that your kids know the proper names of their body parts, because a lot of times I meet parents who, whose kids call their body parts, like other things to make it more comfortable, but it's really not. Like I call mine Gigantor because that's what I was taught in, no, okay. I mean, Should you probably call it like Thanator instead? Scott like that creepy that. thing from, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, but yeah, body parts, um, the reason why I emphasize that too is because if there's, I mean, hopefully not, but if there's ever a traumatic experience, um, you know, you want them to be able to say either in court or in front of a therapist or whatever, this is what happened to me and use the proper terminology because if not, that could actually count against you, believe it or not. And I learned that when I was getting certified. Um, so proper body parts, also teaching them about consent, you know, making sure that they, you know, that they know that no means no, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially, and this goes for both, you know, for any, any gender, you know, so there is a lot of emphasis on, you know, teenage girls, you know, dressing modest and, you know, not giving, Oh, hell no, you know, you know <laughs> but giving, you know, but giving boys, boys a reason, you know, not to touch them, not to, and it shouldn't be that way. You should no, be teaching. I hate that. Yeah. 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 It, and it's still, but it still exists now. It's, like parents still do that. They focus no. on like what the girl is doing, but they don't focus so much on teaching their sons. Like, Hey, you know, if she says no, that means no. If she right. says maybe that's still not that's technically right. not consent. So, you want enthusiastic consent. <laughs> right. And I may, and maybe I take this too far when it comes to consent, but I'm like a huge advocate for just like personal space to begin with. And maybe it's because I do have kiddos on the spectrum. So like, even like some, like a touch that's not expected can be weird for them. So if like somebody wants to hug my kid and they're not into it, like that's an, a, a consent thing. Right. Or if like, so one of my kiddos, really, really likes to give affection and hugs and kisses and things like that all the time because he is on the spectrum, but he doesn't understand that sometimes it's not appropriate or it's not the right time. And that's a conversation of consent. Like, did you ask me if you could do that? Like, we still do that. So if they don't feel like hugging a relative, we don't force the issue because that's consent. Like that's bodily like connection that's touching that maybe you don't want. So that's okay too. <laughs> You're doing I the right know. thing. You're doing we right swing thing. the far way. <laughs> no, no, it's good that you're teaching them that aspect of consent because that goes for sex as well. You know, it's just, it's all consent. And, um, you know, obviously things may still happen. Um, there are parents that still like to preach abstinence more than anything else, but people have to understand that as a teenager, things might happen. And to me, the most important thing is safety more than anything else. So consent, obviously, and then, you know, making sure that they know about contraceptives, that they know about condoms, that they know about, you know, the risks that they are taking, um, having sex, you know, STIs, things like that, you know, that's still very important, uh, conversation to have with children, <laughs> another yeah. version of yeah. you, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but also, um, so I guess also, so what would you recommend to tell parents maybe to, so I know that my daughter, I, I think that we have a great relationship. We talk about a lot of things, but she probably maybe doesn't want to talk to me about other things. What, what's a good like path to happy to finding someone for her to talk about that's not her friend, but also a good informed like person should there be like a designated aunt should there be like a designated cool the person erica that's rivera like, facebook so, but that's yeah. like super chill but she can also be like hey i think this guy's sketch but i don't know like it, what would be so, your how do you navigate adult. that i guess yeah if you i mean if you know of another adult like an aunt um 
that they're more comfortable talking to, it's better that they talk to someone than, mm-hmm. than no one, you know? Um, but yeah, but if, if you have an educator in your area, like myself, I do have people who bring their kids to come talk to me because they may have questions that they're uncomfortable to ask their parents. You know, they may be wondering, I mean, especially now, so this month is Pride Month, it's June. And right. so I've had an influx of calls having to do with LGBT youth. So, you know, that's a scary, scary time when you figure out like you, that you might be gay and you don't want to tell your family. And, mm-hmm. you know, here you are getting the a heterosexual sex talk from your parents and you're like, right. oh, wow. well, well, and wow. that's, that strikes a chord because I do have a kiddo in that community. So that is really cool to have that information. And I think that um, the more we, we move forward as a society, especially even like in middle schools and high schools, there's not a lot of resources for these kids to explore or even have a discussion in a safe space. So that's really cool that you provide that. Yeah, I'm very passionate about that. I'm doing my best to get into the schools, but it, you know, they still yeah, do. Oh yeah. They I, don't let me, they don't let yeah, me. No, I, I, I definitely understand. <laughs> Our so tax paying dollars aren't paying for the, like, I get it. I, get I it. do my best to provide that as a service as well, educating on LGBT wellness, especially for our youth, middle school, high school students that, you know, don't know how to navigate that. They, they kind of, they have their own conversations that they have to have in terms of sex health and dating and healthy relationships and things like that. So, you know, if they're uncomfortable talking to their parents, then I obviously suggest seeking out an educator like myself and, you know, actually I have a a couple websites that I typically recommend. I wish I had them written down, but I will send them, Scott, I will. Yeah, if you could send them to us, that would be really cool. We can put them in our, yeah. And and Erica, you know, I've, 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 I've been on uh, real laughs with you and, and, you know, I knew the, the, the fun stuff that you've done. Um, I didn't know all this other stuff. So Mm -hmm. like super cool um, that you do all this stuff. Thank you for sharing it with us. You know, I, I I can't imagine um, a teenager one, having to learn about sex, but then also having to feel comfortable in their own skin with their sexuality, whether that be gay, straight, you know, lesbian, bi, you know, where, wherever on the spectrum. And, uh, and that's great that there's people out there like you that can kind of help them navigate through that. Because, I mean, I know, I, I know as a parent, uh, I can barely get through the simple conversations of, you know, a straight couple. I couldn't imagine and, and not that I had ever any problem with it, but I, I wouldn't know how to nap. I wouldn't even know how to begin on those conversations. So I'm glad there's people out there like you that do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's definitely important, you know, and I get it. Like if you have like a lesbian daughter, how do you explain that? Oh, when you have sex with a woman, this happens or, you know, STIs are still yeah. a worry, you know, it's, that's, tough yeah, yeah for sure I do have a question Erica, if you have any vid- videos that maybe Chris and I can watch so that we can I educate our daughter or daughter I, on that I I'll give you my stop. email after the at the break you're the worst <laughs> I do have a question though that it, and if we're against the break we can carry no, it you're over. good you're good you're good um what are like are you familiar with the Kinsley scale yes okay so what is that an, an actual thing that people still like go by? Is that still relevant? Is that still a, like a thing where you could be like, oh, I, re- I'm about a four. <laughs> like, I, uh, what, what, and is that you, still, can you educate? I don't know what that scale is. Uh, so, okay. So essentially it's a, we'll, we'll say one to 10. So one meaning you're 100% heterosexual. You could not think about a, for in your case, a male being, any ounce of attractive like you okay. could not even appreciate the fact that someone looks decent 10 is you could not appreciate the fact that a female so like you know polar opposites everybody falls somewhere everybody falls right. somewhere So like if you're like me you love broadway show tunes you cry during uh you know <laughs> that has nothing to do with sexuality fun. though that's yeah. not what you're yeah. attracted like that's not right orient you're talking about like um orientation where you fall on the scale as far as being straight versus being gay and where you are in between. Right. Yeah. So like, I mean, and I'll say in college, I played hard intramurals, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, you know, like, so I, I think that it, Jesus, I forgot everybody hears this. Um, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying, like everybody falls somewhere. So is that something that you talk about with your clients or with like, is that something that is even a conversation or something well, you think about? Is it still relevant? Is that I, I think don't know. Some, I guess. People, 
some people still refer to it. I personally don't uh, use it that much. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I try not to label my clients unless that's what they want, mm -hmm. uh, especially since sexuality sometimes is forever evolving. Um, you know, with the LGBTQ community, you know, there's some people that are non-binary non and are asexual and don't even, the scale is non-existent. To, right. To, um, the limit know, does not yeah. exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just so many um, different orientations, so many different genders. And so I don't really use the scale that much because I still feel almost like that's, con you know, constricted. You yeah. know, I, I, feel like I feel like that would be like kind of a self diet, not diagnosed, but a self, uh, you know, if you feel comfortable as, as a, as a patient or as a person, whatever, coming up with where you are on the scale, but to be, yeah, labeled. I think for yeah, me, yeah, like, I think that's counterproductive. Typically I use that phrase, like after I've had like four to five martinis and I'm <laughs> like, like, I'm sliding sure. down the scale. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen what I've seen, but I'm sliding down I think the if, scale. I like, think if yeah. Zach Efron walked into my house after a couple of beers, I'd be like, yeah. Whatever I happens, slide I'm down the scale. Sl I've slid in Mary, down the scale. I'm, I'm going to need you and my wife to slide down the scale together if you could do Okay, that look, for me. that's Just one of the questions watch. I have, actually, not I, but one that we came up today. Are we sure. close to the break or can I um, uh, pop it up? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so one of the questions was My partner is interested in including another partner. I don't know how I feel. What is your, like, how would you, like, what's your take on that? Like, I'm not opposed, but what is your take Hold on, on Let that? me get a notebook real quick. Yeah, I know. I'm going to take notes as well. <laughs> so, okay. So I cannot give advice as to whether or not to do that. What I can say is that's a conversation that needs to happen between the two partners. Um, you know, if they were in front of me, I'd be asking how long have they been together? Um, being, was being open in relation, an open relationship, an idea before now, like it really just depends on where they're at. You know, mm -hmm. if he's having, if she or he, cause you said partners, so I don't know, but if she or he is having, you know, kind of like second thoughts about considering it, then I obviously would say you're not ready. Like mm -hmm. if it's even something you're worried about in the slightest, don't, you know, you have to be a hundred percent sure because involving another partner involves a lot of emotional dynamic, you know, for some, for some people being open works and it strengthens their trust in their relationship. But for others, it goes the completely other direction where there is jealousy and, you know, maybe that partner isn't respectful of the relationship that brought them in. You know, it's just, it's actually a lot deeper than people think. Like, the topic of threesomes in general is not just this playful thing like society makes it. It is a very complicated situation. Would you? I'm glad that you said that because I uh, like, so I don't care if we're talking about tater tots, like you bring somebody else in the picture and I'm immediately <laughs> angry because that's mine. I'm ter Look, territorial. Dairy doesn't share food. I don't I know. Don't, All no, I, I don't share shit. <laughs> like dairy. <laughs> food I don't share anything why would I share any part like oh, that's gonna be See, a no now, for me dog uh, now Mary you heard that the only thing that I think me and Scott heard was strengthens trust <laughs> that right <laughs> I'm like can you write a prescription uh <laughs> yeah because there is you know people don't like to talk about it but there is the other side where sometimes it is exactly what the relationship is needing sometimes it is like you know, fulfilling a certain fetish that does make the strength, you know, the trust stronger and yeah. the stronger. And it just depends on the couple. I, I feel like I can see you that you like but, you and I are it. together, but then we also <laughs> have this other person, but we're still together. Like I could, like, I can see that Avenue a hundred percent. Um, Erica, would you say that most, like when couples come in, do you, what percentage of guys are like wanting to push the relationship in that direction? Well, I'm just going to say a lot. <laughs> I, I figured. Surprising, I figured actually. That. Wow, that's very surprising. Oh, so I'm not, be, I'm is not surprised it because they are not like fulfilled in like what they're doing currently? Or is it just because it's like this fetish of having more than one person attracted to them? Or like, what is that? Do you like psychologically, what's the underlying 
conditional effects? Like, why is that happening? So same thing. It, it could be either or because I have met some people where it's simply a fetish. They adore their wife. Like, it's not that they they're not happy in the relationship. It's just exciting for them. The thought of another person. Sometimes it's not even them wanting to get involved. The fact that their wife is getting involved with another person is is a fetish for them. That's a turn on for them. So um, it just depends on, again, the dynamic, because I have met couples where they're doing it for the wrong reasons, and that's where it becomes a toxic situation. But I've also met, you know, other couples that are just like, hey, what can we do to spice up our love life? We've been in this for this long, and we've done this, this, and this. What's something else that we can do? And sometimes bringing another, another person is that answer. And like you said, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're like, you know, looking to break up or anything like that. They're just like, hey, we're together. We're monogamous. This person is just another object in the bedroom. You know, it's just- Right, it's basically like a- that yeah, is the open boy. sleeve. They are the right. open sleeve. <laughs> but Mary, can you do that again with your hand, please? I, feel, I know. I wish I didn't do that. I immediately regret and it. This segment that. will be on YouTube. If you guys want to see what an uh, what open sleeve looks like, I'm getting three to my house on Tuesday. So <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday's episode and if you, sure want, you want, visit like. Chris's website. He'll be reselling. You know what? You know what I use? Every open time box, I'm on new here. Open box. I should just send you guys like goodie bags for every oh, visit. Yes. Be like, here's your goodie bag for this for this episode. <laughs> and then you can explain what each thing is. This is fantastic. I love this idea. Oh, is this like, wait, I feel like this is like one of those Fit Fab fun boxes, but mostly <laughs> oh, just fit, wow. if you know what I mean. Fit and fun. Um, <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm here for I that. I love this market. idea. I love the possibilities. <laughs> We'll cut this part out, but I'll give you my number, Erica. I'd be very interested in one of these boxes. <laughs> Chris loves the mystery boxes. He does. Oh, All right, we got to take a quick break. Uh, you're listening to the No New Friends podcast. We'll be right back. Really good segment. Yeah. That was. I, uh, I like the comments. the like you know first segment was a little crazy. Then second one was like serious, and we got some good questions. And I liked yeah. your little uh, idea, Scott, of like well, you know. Yeah, yeah, white so claws are kicking in. I got some. I got some questions. Yeah, for Chris good. just texted me. He goes, "Yeah, I'm slamming white claws." So God help me with the questions um, that I have. Okay, so can we take a three minute hiatus? Um, I have to pee. We'll yeah, start there. Yeah, three minutes. minutes. I'm gonna fill me. up my water real so. quick. Erica, yeah. are, you, are um, you good on time, Erica? I'm great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, yeah, Jared. Three minutes. Hey, I accepted Jared, you your doing, friend buddy? request. I don't know if you saw it. I got on finally <laughs> to do it because I'm awful. Okay, BRB. <laughs> Erica, I was going to ask you this during the show, but I'll ask you again if it's okay. Sure. Are there are there any is there anybody that you've ever had a, an appointment with or anything that allowed you to share like a crazy story that they've told you? Like are there any crazy stories that you're allowed to say or even under like a different alias or something? Huh. Cuz I know I, it could be confidential. I, so, I didn't know if there's I know. I have so many a lot of them are confidential. Gotcha. But, um, I mean, there's one that I could talk about. It's not necessarily between a couple. It was a woman who okay. she was using vaginal exercisers. So the okay. little Benoit balls. And- I actually don't, oh, wait, you're gonna have to explain what all this means. Oh, uh, first okay. of all, started at vaginal exercises. Yes. <laughs> well, people don't realize <laughs> that those little balls are to just exercise. Like people think it's like a pleasurable item and it's not, it's not meant for sexual pleasure. Uh-huh. So- I actually explained this to this particular client and they ended up having sex with them inserted and she actually had to go to the emergency room to get them removed. And I feel like that's quite a story. I would not like to be that person in the (laughs) car saying, Oh no. (laughs) Oh, how do you even, where do you start? Like, (laughs) Right. They were like stuck in her cervix. It was awful. Oh awful. no. Yeah. Wow. So wait, so you've been doing this. So you've been doing this for like 11 years. Did you say 11 years? In November will be 11 years. First of all, congratulations. I'm, I, I, I work for myself. I think that people who start their own businesses are awesome. So I just think it's awesome that you found your niche. I think this is, you know what, when, when Scott first told me about this, we're having a sex coach on, I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is funny. This is, you know, cause the idea of a sex coach is like to someone who doesn't is uneducated about the topics. Like this is wet. This is weird but like 
hearing the first like 30 seconds you started talking, I was like, wow, this makes a lot. I, I learned more in the first 30 seconds of you explaining than I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it was just like, it's very educational. Like there's a lot to it. And I really respect that. I think it's really awesome what you're doing. I appreciate that. I, I, it took a long time. Like I've been doing this 11 years, but the beginning was very hard. Like, I'm sh- yeah, people, I, I'm, I'm sure people did not take me seriously. Um, you know, there's not many of us out there to begin with. Like we right. have, you know, there are a lot of sex therapists and marriage and family counseling, like therapy, but okay. as far as people that become certified as educators, you know, where their sole job is to educate the public, whether that is through speaking engagements, you know, like this month I did pride fest, you know, I go places right. to actually educate people. Like there aren't many of us out there and man, it was, it was tough in the beginning. I, me I bet. And I, I respect the hell out of you for just persisting with it. I mean, I'm sure the first year of course, because for the first couple years for any business is rough. I can only imagine how tough it was for you. And that, yeah. I think that's awesome that you stuck with it. And now look at you, like, this is, this is really cool. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. it. It was worth it. I almost did give up. I'm not gonna lie. I almost did give up a few times. I'm like, no one wants to listen. Like, well, I'm glad you didn't because this is yeah. a really, really cool business. And I can tell that you really care about it too. I yeah. do. Erica, have you ever thought about doing, doing a podcast? Like you know starting what? your I own? Have, I have thought about it plenty of times. I actually have clients that like they request it. Like I had a Patreon that I started <clears throat> over COVID. Cause I'm like, mm. look, I've been doing this for oh, over very cool. Years. Yeah. I'm like, I've been doing this for 10 years. I got to do something, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, I, I wanted to do a podcast and the Patreon be something that would support it, mm-hmm. but I, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. Yeah. I need that, like, I need that extra fire on, you know, <laughs> someone to light a little fire and be like, do it. Well, <laughs> I, know, I, I, I seriously, think you, I think you should do it uh, if for, for a couple of reasons. One, you have so much information that like, I, I mean, we could have you on every month for the next three months and we're not even going to scratch the surface of everything that you can, you know, educate us on, educate our listeners on, or we can goof on, you know, it, it, like not even close. Um, yeah. a, a podcast, it, it's, it, it can only help people and your, and yourself, you yeah. know, with, with your, with your business, because one, it's more exposure. Um, and you know, that's once a week, an hour long, you know, where you pick a topic and, and, you know, what you would have is much different than what we're, we're not niche at all. Although I've been listening to this podcast and now I figured out what our niche is, which is kind of like, what is our niche, Scott? It's, 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 it's adult. (laughs) It's, it's, it's adulting. I mean, we talk about parenting, we talk about relationships and this is kind of like, and you know, the Chris and Mary, we'll talk about this more later, but this is kind of the start of (laughs) where I want to push the show, not necessarily all about sex, but just adulting and, and, you know, navigating through being a parent, being busy, you know, how, a job, hustling, whatever. Um, but I think that people, uh, first of all, Erica, you're natural on a microphone. I mean, yeah. the first time I did real laughs with you, I was like, yeah, she needs to have her own podcast. Oh, um, that'd be so cool. That'd be so cool. And I appreciate yeah. the encouragement because it's been like on kind of, on the back of my mind for a while. Cause I'm like, man, it's, and it's not just like podcasts like this, where I could be informative. But if I'm like, if I could do like YouTube videos, just explaining like, please, hey, this, is, yeah. this is how you use this safely. Oh my yeah. God. Yes. Like, yeah. I, I know. I, I, I think you have something in, 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 you know, if, if, if you ever, and I know you have such a busy schedule, but even as you're getting started with it or whatever, like any, anytime you want to come on this show, like whether it's once a month, whatever, anytime you are always welcome. We'd love to have you as as much as we can because i think there's <laughs> there's so much to offer and then i would encourage like i said you, you're a natural on a microphone uh and i i think that you bring a, a hip approach to it you know where it's 100%. educational um it can be fun it can be serious and i think you know that balance and and you're just so good at it plus all the other things you know the the advocacy and the education from the you know what i call the darker side Dark um side. just from experience and and just i I th- I, th- I think you're sitting on a gold mine. No, I think it's really cool that I'm anything I can do to help like to <laughs> push all of that stuff is really cool. Sorry. It took me so long guys. I bought waffles, new food, and now she smells like Mr. And Mrs. Big Head salmon bushes. <laughs> she smells like an actual salmon and I hate it. I had to push her out of my room because it's 